the anatomy of Agile. So what we want to do today is talk about the anatomy of it. In other words, what is Agile? What are the different pieces? If, the, if that's even a thing. So I want to ask a developer. So that's you. Yeah, Tell us more me. about Agile. I mean, Agile, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about Agile, maybe questioning whether they should be on Agile, or maybe they are, but they just don't quite get it because it's just been told to them, we're doing it this way. Agile is another um, SDLC, a software development um, life cycle, that same, you know, there's waterfall and other things there, but Agile is currently the most, more popular one. And it's a way to break down your tasks so that you can always have a MVP, a minimum viable product. So that, and by doing that, you're going to be able to adjust to customer needs, right? Because our trends move so quickly. One week something might be popular or needed, and then the next week is not. And so by doing this, we're able to go and always have something that's able to be released at one point. So you, you touched on a point that I, 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 hopefully I'm picking up what you're throwing down, which is you're trying to get things into small batch sizes. In other yes. words, your work, what you deliver in work, small batch sizes, and you mentioned also it's something that can be usable right away. Yes. So minimum viable product. Yep. Yeah, I definitely need to have it where you can always deliver something. Is not something's not going to be half baked. That you can, you know, and when you do it in small batch sizes, then you always make sure that your batch size is deliverable. So, with, when you're organizing that work with your teams, do you have rituals? Do you have ways of organizing your work so that you can deliver that on a short, in a short amount of time? Um, which is very different, as you pointed out, from Waterfall. But what, what, is that rit what do those rituals look like, or how, how do you organize that work? I mean, I think the first thing is to create user stories. And what a user story is, is a task for the workers to do. And the format is usually as a, some role, okay. I would like. So it could be like, as a developer, I would like some internal tools to be able to test. And that would just be a task to accomplish. And by that time the story is done, then that task will be done. Okay, now you said as a developer. Can it be as a customer? As a customer, yes. I would like to something? Yep, as a customer, as a salesperson, it doesn't matter, it's whichever role, but it's use as a to know the angle that we want to go towards. And then how do you keep track of what comes next? You're going to deliver something, that's been delivered. Okay, what next? How do we keep track of So we have work? story points. So each user story is going to have story points. Okay. And in the beginning, when you first start Agile, it's always going to be a little bit difficult to know what points you're going to give. And you just kind of lay it out, and you kind of pick one and say, this one's going to be this much work. I'm going to give it some sort of number. And based off of how much work that was going to be, you're going to go and adjust all of your other ones. I see. So it's a way of estimating work, maybe? Kind of. Kind of? Okay. So then once you've, you've done that, you said it's, it's so many story points to do something. We defined everything in the beginning. There's so many story points. Then what? Uh, what comes next? Uh, the work itself? The... Well, we need to define a sprint duration. And a sprint duration is pretty much how long do you have to complete A or many stories? And depending on, um, you got to decide how many stories you're going to pick up based off of your points. And there are, each one have different sprint teams, so how many points can your team do in a certain duration? And that duration really varies. It could, duration, it could vary between product to product. It can vary between, I mean, you tend to not want to change it within a product, sure. but within different products. You could have two-week sprints, you could have three-week sprints. Typically don't want to recommend anything more than that, but sometimes it's necessary. So as a developer, you're signing up for X amount of work yeah. in this, whatever that duration is for the yeah. sprint. So you might say, it's two weeks, it's three weeks, but in that, I'm committing to this much work based on the number of story points that exactly. you've assigned to that work. And like I said, in the beginning, it's going to be a little bit difficult because you're just making an assumption. But as you are going along and 
a sprint after sprint, you're going to start learning things because now you have the data. And data is seen in the burn down and the velocity, which is pretty much charts to go map how much work were you able to accomplish based for, for the velocity at least, um, how much work was done, points were done, and then how much was estimated. And I like, see. so that you kind of start graphing it all out and that data is going to help drive your future choices of which ones you're going to choose. So now you've, you've defined the work, you, you have the story points in it, you've now built everything. What happens on a daily basis? Does it happen, I mean, in other words, how do you track your work? So is it a daily basis? Do you wait till the very end? Do you, you know, yeah, walk, so walk me through that. Kind of why we call this the daily stand-up. Um, there is a daily stand-up, and every day we're going to talk about what is blocking you. It's not what are you doing. It's what is blocking you with your story. What help do you need? And are you on, t on task? And so you just talk about that every day to make sure that you are on task or there's nothing that can are, are blockers. And if there are, there's a scrum master to be able to help take away those blockages or whatever the case is. I see, so you have this daily stand-up, you share all the progress that you've made and perhaps mm -hmm. any blockers, yeah. so you can get help uh, from your teammates yeah. perhaps. And so, now that you've done that on a daily basis, you're at the end of your sprint, what does that look like? So let's say that you've already done all your tasks, you accomplish all the tasks that you have committed to, then there's going, you know, obviously you're going to deliver and whatnot, and then there's going to be the a demo. A demo to whoever is kind of like, a lot of times it's the customer or whoever the stories were for. So if it's for the developer, then you kind of do the, de for the developer. If it's for um, the marketing person, then you kind of demo it to them. And then so that you can get the feedback, immediate feedback on whether or not they like that feature. That can end up being more stories later, but that doesn't mean that for this particular story, you're going to go and change it. I see. Yeah. And then once all that's finished, do you have some sort of reflection yeah, so on there's how the, things went over the sprint duration? There's a retro, retrospective. So you go and take a look at what worked well, what did not work well, what can we change for the next duration? You know, how are we going to improve ourselves? And as you're going along sprint after sprint, the idea is to get better. Um, have a better velocity and be able to go in and do do more work in that sprint duration. I see. Now, as a as a last point, I'm hoping that is in your career. Have you seen that that sprints in their retrospectives or at the end of a sprint in the retrospective that you focus on the issue, not the person? So it's blameless. Oh, you yes. know, it's it's not yes. it's not bringing in the people side of it and and. and and blamestorming, rather you're you're just looking at the process, perhaps maybe the code. What what could we have done better in that? Maybe it's a process thing or something. Have you seen that in your? I mean, that's ideal. Sometimes, once in a while, there probably is blame game. It's hard to say, like for sure, that doesn't happen. I mean, let's be realistic sure. about it. But I think also we probably, as developers, have our own developer guilt. But no, I mean, ultimately, the retrospective is to see. Did I point this right? Sometimes you say, oh, it's five points. No, this really was like 10 points, Ooh. right? So you kind of look at that. Well, if I think this was 10 points, what could I have done differently? Maybe I should have broke down the story a little bit further because it needs to fit in into a good, small piece of work. Fantastic. So in the end, smaller pieces, smaller batch sizes, deliver them with, as, as a team. Uh, you're looking at each other going and, and supporting each other, asking for help, getting the support that you need, and in the end, what you end up with is a minimal viable product, and then you're reflecting on everything with the retrospective yep. saying, how can we do this better, faster, yep. uh, with more accuracy on mm -hmm. story points and so forth. So, um, yeah. closing thoughts? I mean, if you are interested in learning more details about all of these individual pieces, definitely continue the journey with us because we are going to go in a deep dive on, I think every single one of those, this was just kind of a highlight of everything going on. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think we could talk, each one of those points is something you could just deep dive into. Yeah. And we're hoping you could join us. Again, leave us some comments. And this is The Daily Stand-Up. Thank you again. We'll catch you in the next episode.